Friends, let us summarize what we have learnt in the last lecture. So, in the last lecture, we initiated discussion on the fluid solid non catalytic heterogeneous reactions and we looked at what are the different modes based on the uh, nature of the catalytic nature of the non catalytic heterogeneous reaction that is if the size of the particle which is actually uh, involved in the reaction size of the solid which is involved in the reaction if that changes if the size changes or if the particle actually the size of the particle remains constant throughout the reaction so based on that the uh, the mode of uh, heterogeneous reaction can be different and the resistances that are actually involved are different. And we also described uh, initiated uh, two, two different types of uh, models, one is the uh, progressive model, uh, progressive conversion model, the other one is the shrinking core model. And then we looked uh, because most of the reactions follow the shrinking core model, we initiated uh, the uh, writing the uh, cap, uh, writing balances to capture the uh, size of the particle as a function of time for the shrinking core model. So, let us and also we in, discussed on different uh, different processes which may be rate controlling and then let us continue from there. So, suppose if diffusion through the uh, gas film controls the overall conversion. Suppose diffusion through the gas film uh, controls the overall conversion, then if the if the reaction is let us say A species A which is in the fluid stream reacts with solid B which is in the in the particle core and that leads to formation of certain products and, uh, and if we assume that the, uh, if the if the diffusion through the gas film is controlling which means that the concentration gradient is essentially is in the gas film and as all the other processes that is diffusion through the ash layer which is basically the, uh, con consists of the inert material and the product that may actually stick to the uh, stick firmly to that layer and the unreacted core which is present uh, inside the ash layer. So, the diffusion through that ash layer is faster than the diffusion of the reactant species through the gas film and also if the reaction that occurs at the interface of the ash layer and the unreacted core if that is also very fast then it means that the that, that the uh, uh, concentration in ash layer and in unreacted core of species A is approximately 0. So, which means that the in the time scales where the diffusion of the uh, species occurs these the concentration in the ash layer and the unreacted core of the species is approximately 0. Now, so we wrote a model in the last lecture and the model is uh, that captures the uh, change rate of change of the radius of the particle because of the heterogeneous reaction heterogeneous fluid solid reaction is given by r square dr by dt minus equal to minus kg which is the mass transport coefficient into the external surface area multiplied by the concentration of the species in the gas phase divided by 4 pi into the density of the catalyst density of the uh, solid which is participating in the uh, heterogeneous reaction not catalyst. So, now the external we, are, we have assumed that it is a spherical particle. So, therefore, S external is equal to 4 pi into R naught square where R naught is the initial radius of the particle and uh, the, the size does not change except that the unreacted core starts shrinking uh, due to the uh, occurrence of the heterogeneous reaction. So, so, substituting this expression we find that R square dr by dt that is equal to minus kg cag into R naught square divided by rho b. So, that is the model equation and if and now if we integrate this expression then we will be able to find out what is the 
how the radius changes with respect to time. So, now we can integrate this expression between r naught and r. Remember that r is the suppose if this is the uh, particle and the uh, unreacted core is actually present somewhere in the center and the r naught is the initial radius of this particle and r is the radius of the unreacted core which is a function of time. So, we can integrate this expression between r naught and r which will tell us what is the uh, speed at which or what is the what is the radius as a function of time. So, r square d r that is equal to time d t. So, now integrating this expression we can find that the relationship between the instantaneous radius of the unreacted core as a function of other properties and time is given by 1 by 3 r cube minus r naught cube that is equal to minus k g r naught square which is the square of the radius of the initial particle initial uh, uh, core which, which, which contains the solids which is available for the reaction to occur and that is multiplied by C A G into time. So, that is the expression for the radius as a function of time. Now, so we, we can rearrange this expression and we can find that time taken for reaching a certain, under, a certain core radius is given by divided by r by r naught the whole cube. Now, from this expression we can find out what is the time that is required for complete conversion. Now, complete conversion is achieved when all of the solid core has actually been consumed for reaction to form product for to form the necessary products. So, for complete conversion complete conversion r is equal to 0 that is the radius of the unreacted core has to be 0 which means that all of the uh, solid which is available as reactant is now consumed. So, suppose if tau is the time taken for complete conversion. So, from this expression setting r equal to 0 we can find out that tau is equal to rho b r naught divided by 3 into k g into c a g. So, that is the time required for complete conversion of the solid which is present in the unreacted in the in the core for, for, for to form the products. So, now uh, by using using the uh, expression for complete conversion we can now write the find out the ratio of uh, the time taken to reach a particular radius divided by the time taken for the complete conversion. So, that is given by 1 minus r by r naught cube and that is essentially obtained by taking a ratio of this expression and this expression. So, if we take a ratio of these two expressions, we will find what is the uh, what is the time uh, what is the uh, time fractional time taken in order to reach a, a particular radius r. So, now if we define that the fraction of fraction unreact, what is the fraction of the core which is unreacted, then that is given by 1 minus x b. If x b is the conversion of the solid, uh, b represents the species present in the solid and that is equal to the volume of unreacted core divided by the total volume of the particle total volume of the particle. So, that is given by 4 by 3 pi r cube where r is the instantaneous radius of the unreacted core uh, divided by 4 by 3 into pi r naught cube where r naught is the radius of the initial particle. So, that is given by r divided by r naught the whole cube. So, therefore, from this uh, relationship between the conversion and the instantaneous radius of the unreacted core, we can rewrite the fractional time taken to reach a particular radius as t by tau is equal to the actual conversion and that is equal to 1 minus r by r naught the whole cube. So, the fractional time 
taken to reach a certain radius is directly equal to the conversion if the overall conversion is actually controlled by the diffusion through the gas film. So, next if we look at the diffusion through the ash layer, suppose if we look at diffusion through ash layer. Suppose if we assume that the diffusion through the ash layer that is the layer which is present between the unreacted core and the gas film. So, the the species from bulk it, uh, it comes to the surface of the uh, core through the gas film and then it diffuses through the ash layer in order for it to reach the unreacted core for the where the reaction occurs. So, suppose if the diffusion through the ash layer is actually the con rate controlling step that is it is the slowest step and the other two that is the reaction step and the diffusion through the gas film. If these two are actually very fast steps compared to the uh, diffusion through the ash layer then uh, we can now model this system assuming that the diffusion layer diffusion through the ash layer is the one which controls the actual process. So, in this case suppose if we assume that the reaction is species A in fluid form plus species B in solid form leads to the formation of products. It must be noted here that the stoichiometric coefficient of B can take values other than 1. And we can now suppose if R naught is the initial, suppose R naught is the initial uh, radius of the spherical particle, spherical particle which is actually participating in the uh, in the in the heterogeneous reaction. And suppose if there is an unreacted core, and the instantaneous radius of this unreacted core, let's say if this is given by R of t, so that's a function of time and there is a gas film which is actually present around this particle. So, the gas film is present around this particle. So, the species A diffuses from gas film uh, from the bulk to the gas film to the surface of the uh, of the particle and then diffuses through the ash layer. So, this is the ash layer and diffuses through the ash layer. So, therefore, we expect that if diffusion through the ash layer is the controlling step, then the concentration gradient of the species A is essentially going to be only in the ash layer. In all other layers, the concentration is going to be uniform. So, therefore, we can quickly sketch what is going to be the, we can intuit what is going to be the concentration profile. So, suppose if this is R naught, that is the radius of particle and this is the center of the, of the sphere and this is R naught and if this is r that is the instantaneous radius of the unreacted core. Then we will we can expect that the if suppose this is the that is the concentration of species in the gas phase that is the bulk concentration. Then we can expect that the concentration profile will essentially look like this. where in the bulk in the bulk uh, bulk gas phase and in the gas film the concentration essentially remains as the concentration as that of the bulk concentration which is cag uh, or ca not and uh, and there will be a, a gradient of the species a in the uh, in the ash layer and as soon as the species reaches the surface of the unreacted core the reaction is very fast and therefore the reaction will immediately occur and so the concentration of species in the unreacted core is going to be zero now we can write a simple mole balance in order to capture the rate of change of the concentration of the species as a function of time uh, as a, uh, as a function of other properties of the of this system and this this will help in estimating how the radius changes with respect radius of the unreacted core changes with time so let's write a simple mole balance suppose if this is the unre this is the uh, initial particle suppose if this is the particle at any time t and the radius of the particle is r naught remember that the it is an uh, the size of this particle is not changing and if the unreacted core is present here. So, that is the unreacted core whose radius is now r t that is a function of time and suppose if we take a small element.
Suppose if we take a small element and the thickness of this element is delta r and if we assume that the positive r is the, uh, r, the radius of the radius going outward from the center is, uh, is the positive direction, then we can write a we can write a mole balance where we can say that the rate rate at which the species is entering this element minus the rate at which the species leaves plus whatever is being generated that should be equal to 0 that should be equal to accumulation sorry. So, now if we assume that the if we assume that the concentration profile in the ash layer. So, this is the ash layer here. So, if you assume that the concentration profile in ash layer at any time is equal to the steady state profile which means that if we assume a pseudo steady state or quasi steady state approximation quasi steady state approximation uh, for the quasi steady state approximation for the concentration of species in the ash layer, then the accumulation is equal to 0. So, if the if you assume quasi steady state this means that the there is there is no accumulation. So, accumulation is equal to 0. So, therefore, we can now write a mole balance where the rate at which the species enters if w a r is the molar flux at which the species is entering that element delta r thickness at r. So, that w a r at r is the molar flux with which the species is entering that element uh, multiplied by 4 pi r square multiplied by 4 pi r square it is a molar flux, but the balance is written in molar rate. So, w a r which is the molar flux multiplied by the corresponding area uh, at r and w a r into 4 pi r square at r plus d r that is the rate molar rate at which the species enters this element and this is the molar rate at which the species leaves plus nothing is being generated because the reaction is actually occurring at the unreacted core surface. So, therefore, generation is 0 and we have assumed that it is a, a quasi steady state approximation. So, therefore, the rate of change uh, therefore, the accumulation term is also equal to 0. So, now we can set uh, limit delta r goes to 0. So, then we will get the model equation will reduce to d by dr w a r into r square equal to 0. So, that is the that is the mole balance that is the uh, that is the mole balance. Now, we need to know what is this w a r w a r is the molar rate and the process with which the species is actually entering that element is the diffusion. So, the molar ray, molar flux can actually be uh, related to the concentration using the fixed law and so suppose if we assume that it is uh, equimolar counter diffusion. So, because there are two species which is participating in the in the reaction species A which is in the fluid phase and species B which is a solid phase. So, suppose if we assume that if you assume that if it is uh, equimolar counter diffusion if you assume equimolar counter diffusion from stoichiometry we can actually discern that the flux with which the species A is actually entering should be equal to the flux with which the species B is actually reacting to form a certain product. So, therefore, W A R is given by minus D E which is the effective diffusivity of the species multiplied by D C A by D R. And so, plugging this into plugging the molar flux. So, this is the molar flux assuming that it is equimolar counter diffusion that is the molar flux and d e is the corresponding diffusivity and plugging this into the mole balance we find that the mole balance is d by d r minus r square equal to 0. So, now we need to solve this equation in order to find concentration as a function of position. 
So, remember that we said we will assume quasi steady state for the concentration profile in the ash layer that is the instantaneous concentration can be assumed to be that of the uh, of the steady state profile in the ash layer. So, the, the corresponding boundary conditions are at r equal to r naught which is the outer rim of the particle remember that the particle size does not change. So, at r equal to r naught we expect that the concentration of the species is equal to that of the bulk concentration or the gas phase bulk concentration. And at r equal to r of t which is now remember that the radius is now changing with time because the unreacted core is now shrinking. So, C a equal to 0 because this is a, a diffusion layer ash layer diffusion controlled uh, process and because and also at r equal to t there is a there are fresh fresh solid is present the unreacted core the reactant actually uh, experiences unreacted core which is now ready for reaction. So, on integrating we can find that the concentration is given by C a by C a naught that is equal to 1 by r which is basically which is a function of time minus 1 by r divided by 1 by r minus 1 by r naught. So, 1 by r is any position between r naught and r and r of t is the location of the unreacted core and r naught is the outer rim of the particle. So, now if I sketch the if we sketch the concentration profile. So, if this is the center of the sphere and this is r naught. So, that is the thickness of the sphere. So, this is decreasing decreasing r and let us say this is r of t the unreacted core is actually present between 0 and r of t and so if we plot C a by C a naught then the concentration profile essentially it looks like this. So, it decreases from 1 all the way to 0 at r of t because the reaction actually occurs since uh, quickly at this location. Now, in order to obtain the the ray uh, in order to obtain the in order to find out what is the radius of the unreacted core, we need to find out what is the expression for r of t as a function of other properties of the system. So, now we can from, from because it is diffusion control, the molar flux at the interface the molar flux at fluid solid interface where the reaction actually occurs because it we have assumed that it is diffusion controlled in the ash layer. So, as soon as the fluid species reaches the surface of the uh, of the uh, of the unreacted core the reaction is going to occur Im immediately. So, therefore, the molar flux at the fluid solid interface should be equal to the rate at which the reaction actually occurs. So, let us look at the molar flux at the fluid solid interface. So, molar flux will be W A R which is equal to the diffusivity D multiplied by D C A by D R at R equal to R and that is given by minus d e c a naught divided by r square into 1 by r minus 1 by r naught. Now, because the reaction occurs immediately the rate at which the molar flux molar flux at which the uh, species actually reaches the unreacted core should be equal to the multiplied by the area should be equal to the amount of reaction that occurs. So, therefore, we can now write a balance on on the and the elemental solid we can write a balance on elemental solid in order to relate the rate of reaction and the flux so the rate at which the solid that actually uh, enters uh, in the ash layer which is equal to 0 minus the rate at which the solid uh, leaves the ash layer that is equal to 0 and the rate at which it is being generated is basically the R b is the reaction rate multiplied by the area of the unreacted core because the reaction actually is occurring on the surface of the unreacted core and the solids are not moving. So, therefore, the rate in and the rate out are 0 and this is the generation term and that should be equal to the accumulation rate and the accumulation rate is essentially given by d by d t of phi b rho b into the volume of the particle. Now, phi b 
is nothing but the volume fraction volume fraction of the unreacted core which is occupied by the solid. So, now of plugging in the expression for the volume of the unreacted core we can rewrite the balance as R b 4 pi R square that is equal to d by d t pi R cube. On simplifying this expression we will find that d R by d t which is the rate at which the radi unreacted core radius changes with time and that is equal to divided by phi b into rho b. So, now because the it is a it is diffusion controlled in the ash layer soon after the species reaches the surface of the solid unreacted core the reaction is going to occur immediately. So, therefore, the rate of reaction should be equal to the uh, molar flux the flux of reaction should be equal to the flux at which the reactant is actually reaching the surface of the unreacted core. So, therefore, R b that should be equal to minus w a r at r equal to r. So, remember that the minus sign here is essentially refers to the fact that the uh, the fluid because the diffusion of species the fluid diffusion diffusion of species a is in the negative direction. So, we said that the sign convention is we assume that the outward direction is positive and the diffusion of the species A is actually going from outside to the inside of the particle. So, therefore, the diffusion is actually in the negative r direction and that is why there is a, a minus sign that has been inserted here and that should be equal to d e c a naught divided by r square into 1 by r minus 1 by r naught. So, this expression relates the rate at which the solid is being consumed for reaction and the other properties of that system. So, from here we can find out the we can rewrite the expression for the for d r by d t which is the rate at which the radius changes with time that is equal to divided by 1 by r minus r square by r naught. So, now we can integrate this expression at time t equal to 0 that is when the reaction uh, has not started then the size of the unreacted core is equal to r naught. And so, we can integrate this expression and we can find out that the time taken to reach a certain radius of the unreacted core is given by rho b r naught square into phi b which is the volume fraction of the unreacted core which is occupied by the solid divided by 6 into diffusivity into C a naught multiplied by 1 minus 3 r by r naught square plus 2 into r by r naught cube. So, that is the expression for that is the relationship between the time that is taken to reach a certain radius and the other properties of the uh, of the system. So, now if I if you attempt to understand the radius the radius of the unreacted core as a function of time that can actually be captured in this graph. So, suppose if this is the center of the particle and this is the ray outer rim of the particle that is the initial radius of the unreacted core and so suppose if we look at C the amount of species which is actually being consumed. So, if we plot C a by C a naught so that actually reduces with position. So, if R t 1 is the radius of the unreacted core let us say at time t 1 and if you assume that t 1 is greater than 0 and at a later time further reaction would have occurred and the unreacted core would have shrunk a little more and so this will be r of t 2 this will be the profile with uh, at time t 2 where t 2 is now greater than t 1 and then at a much later time the profile would be So, that is the uh, concentration of species uh, species A as a function of uh, position at various time. So, as we can see that as the reaction proceeds the ash layer increases and therefore, the uh, species A has to penetrate. So, uh, therefore, species A therefore, species A actually 
penetrates into the ash layer and uh, as a function of time the there will be more ash which is formed around the unreacted core and therefore, we can see this is the concentration profile. So, now for all of the uh, all of the core to be consumed. So, for all to core to be consumed which means that uh, the which means that the unreacted solid actually goes to complete conversion that can the time that it takes for complete conversion can be estimated as tau which is equal to rho b which is the density of the uh, particle multiplied by r naught into phi b divided by 6 d e into C a naught. So, that is the time taken for complete conversion that is all of the solid which is present in the un, in the in the original particle has now been consumed because of the reaction. So, using this expression we can find out that T by tau which is the ratio of time taken to reach a certain radius uh, because of this reaction divided by the time taken for complete conversion that is given by 1 minus 3 into r by r naught square plus 2 into r by r naught cube. So, suppose if we define conversion x b as before as 1 minus r by r naught the whole cube, then T by tau can be written as 1 minus 3 into 1 minus x b which is the conversion of uh, the solid which is present in the uh, in the particle plus 2 into 1 minus x b. So, this is the uh, relationship between the time taken for the core to reach a certain location and the corresponding conversion and the conversion is obviously a function of the size of the unreacted core. So, now the third, uh, third process which may control the overall reaction is the actual reaction that is occurring in the surface of the unreacted core. So, suppose if we assume that it is reaction controlling. Now, what it means is that the reaction the, the reactant species now it diffuses through the gas film and it diffuses through the uh, ash layer and then it reaches the surface of the unreacted core. Now, if the reaction is the reaction that is occurring on the surface of the unreacted core with the solid is controlling the overall reaction then it means that that is the slowest step and the diffusion that is occurring through the gas phase, gas film and also through the ash layer is actually fi is actually fast. And so, which means that the reaction is unaffected by ash layer and gas film resistances. So, this is unaffected by the uh, ash layer and the gas film resistances and also it suggests that the rate should be proportional to the surface area of the unreacted core. So, rate must be proportional to the surface area of the unreacted core. So, suppose if we depict the particle. So, here is a particle and the initial radius of the particle is R naught and the ash layer and the unreacted core at any time t let us say if that as R and the ash layer which is actually present around is between R and R naught. Then if, if A in the fluid form and B in the solid form reacts to give products. Then one could intuit what is going to be the concentration profile. So, because the reaction is the one which is controlling the concentration of the species in the gas phase in the gas film and also in the ash layer will be the concentration of the species in the bulk gas stream itself because the it is a very it is a very fast process and the reaction is the slow process. And so, we expect that the uh, concentration of the species between R and R naught. So, if this is R naught will be equal to the concentration of the species in the gas phase and if this is the center of the core. And as soon as it, uh, it reaches the surface it will undergo reaction and so there is no concentration in uh, gradient inside the uh, core. 
So, now we can write a mole balance in order to capture the change in the uh, constant change in the uh, radius of the core as a function of time. So, suppose if N A is the number of moles of A which is actually reacting then d n a by d t which is the rate at which the number of moles of a a is b moles of a is being consumed because of reaction. So, that should be equal to minus k prime into the area of the unreacted core multiplied by the corresponding gas phase concentration. So, that is basically the rate at which the reaction is actually occurring. So, now substituting the area of the surface instantaneous area of the unreacted core that is given by d n a by d t is given by minus k prime into 4 pi r square where r is the radius of the unreacted core at any point in time multiplied by C a g. So, now n a in the number of moles of the uh, species gas reactant should be equal to the number of moles of the solid which is actually reactant by based on stoichiometry and so expressing that so n a equal to n b and and n b equal to rho b into the volume of the unreacted core. So, now plugging in this expression plugging in this relationship into the mole ba into the mole balance we find that uh, we can rewrite the mole balance as rho b into 4 pi r square into dr by dt that's equal to minus k double prime into cag so we can simplify this mole balance as dr by dt that's equal to minus k prime which is the intrinsic specific rate constant in C A G divided by the density of the uh, of the unreacted core. So, now we can integrate this expression to find out the find out the radius of the unreacted core as a function of time and other properties. So, that is given by R naught is the initial particle size and suppose at any instant in time R is the uh, size of the unreacted core that is equal to k prime C A G divided by rho b integral between 0 to t d t. So, from here we can find that r minus r naught divided by rho b and so we can rearrange this expression to find that the time at which a certain radius can be reached is given by rho b into r minus r naught divided by k double prime into C A G. Now, what is the time taken for uh, reaching complete conversion? The complete conversion can be achieved when r is equal to 0. So, there should be a minus sign here. So, where the complete conversion can be achieved when, uh, when, when r is 0. when r equal to 0 that is all of the core unrea all of the solids which is present in the core has actually completely reacted. So, now with that we can find out what is the time required for complete conversion. So, if tau is the time required for complete conversion that is given by rho b into r naught divided by k double prime into C A G. So, using this expression we can dry, we can find out what is the fractional time required for reaching a particular radius that is t by tau that is given by 1 minus r by r naught and that is equal to 1 minus 1 minus x p to the power of 1 by 3. So, that is the relationship between the fractional time taken to reach a particular radius and the corresponding conversion if the uh, if the system is reaction controlling. So, now we looked at three particular cases where we looked at what is the relationship between the fractional time taken with respect to conversion for if the system is uh, diffusion controlling through the gas film, if the uh, if it is diffusion controlling through the ash layer or if it is reaction controlling all of these for a case where the particle size does not change. That is the uh, as when the reaction occurs an ash layer is formed where the ash layer may contain inert solids or the products which may firmly uh, bind to the uh, layer uh, bind to the layer where the solids have already reacted. Now, the next question is we looked at two modes earlier two modes of this kind of fluid solid non catalytic reactions where 
one case where the size of the particle remains same, the other case where the size actually starts shrinking. So, in the case of where the size uh, starts shrinking, we can now look at what are the different rate controlling steps and what are the ways to find out what is the radius of the unreacted core as a function of time. So, now second mode is where the particle size changes. Now, if particle size changes it immediately implies that there is no ash layer. We assume here that the density variation due to reaction is negligible that is the density of solid product and reactants are not very different. If the densities are different the particle size can change even if ash layer is present. The number of steps that may control the overall conversion actually decreases from what we have seen in the first case where the particle sign does not change because there is no ash layer that is present and therefore, the diffusion through the ash layer can be ignored now that is the resistance for diffusion through ash layer does not exist for this particular case. So, suppose as before we assume that A species A which is in the fluid phase stream reacts with species B which is in the solid phase to form certain products. Now, uh, the different steps that are actually involved in this case is basically diffusion of species A that is mass transfer of A from bulk to unreacted core or gas film diffusion and then reaction at the solid surface. Reaction at the solid surface and then diffusion of the products back into the gas stream into the gas stream. So, there is no ash layer. So, therefore, there is no diffusion to the ash layer. So, what are all the different uh, processes that may actually control the overall conversion? The first one would be film diffusion controlling. So, the gas film which is actually present around the core which is actually undergoing a, this uh, fluid solid non catalytic reaction. So, that diffusion through that film might actually control the overall reaction or it might be reaction controlling. It might be reaction controlling. So, let us start looking at the reaction controlling process. So, suppose if the overall reaction is con overall con conversion is controlled by the reaction it is reaction controlling. Suppose, if it is reaction controlling then because the if it is reaction controlling it means that the reaction is the slowest step and all the other processes are correspondingly faster. So, therefore, the presence of the gas fill in around is actually irrelevant to the actual process that is occurring because it is a it is a fast process and therefore, the it depend it is going to depend only on the unreacted core which is uh, which is present and which is participating in the reaction. So, it depends only on the unreacted core and it is same as what same as the reaction controlling Rea same as uh, the system of uh, system where the reaction is controlling the overall conversion in the case of the particles where the size of the particle was not changing that is the previous mode that we had looked at. So, it is same as unchanging size. So, therefore, we can easily read that the fraction of time taken to reach a, a certain radius is simply given by 1 minus r by r naught and that is given by 1 minus 1 minus x p to the power of 1 by 3. Now, suppose if let us look at the next case as if the if the overall conversion is actually controlled by the gas phase diffusion. So, if it is a, a gas film diffusion control, suppose if the overall reaction is controlled by the diffusion through the gas film. then the film resistance that is the resistance offered for transport of species from the bulk to the surface of the unreacted core is actually controlled by many many different factors and some of the factors are the what is the relative velocity between particle 
and the gas stream or the fluid stream. So, remember that the, the, the reaction is actually conducted in a reactor where the particles are now moving relative to that of the gas phase. So, therefore, the relative velocity plays an important role as to how much resistance that the gas film is actually offering to trans offering to transport of the reactants from the bulk gas phase to the surface of the unreacted core. Another uh, major factor is the size of the particle itself. Another factor uh, on all other fluid properties, they may also affect the resistance that is offered by the gas film. So, there are several correlations which are available for estimating mass transport coefficient under the gas film diffusion control. So, remember that the resistance that is offered by the uh, diffusion of the reactant species through the gas film is essentially captured in the mass transport coefficient kg just like what we have seen for the earlier mode and there are several correlations which are available and one correlation is by it is called the Frosling correlation and that correlation is given by kg diameter of the particle dp multiplied by the mole fraction of the species in the gas phase divided by the corresponding diffusivity and that should be equal to 2 plus 0.6 into Schmidt number to the power of 1 by 3 and Reynolds number to the power of 1 by 2. So, Schmidt number is nothing but the ratio of kinematic viscosity to the corresponding diffusivity effective diffusivity of that species and the Reynolds number is essentially the dimensionless quantity that captures the corresponding fluid flow properties. So, now if the uh, if the particle size is very small, so for small dp and small velocity u the mass transport coefficient from uh, if you look at if you uh, more if you actually do a little bit of algebra on the uh, on the correlation one can actually discern that the mass transport coefficient approximately scales as 1 over diameter of the particle so under these conditions this uh, uh, the stokes law can actually be applied in order to find out the estimate the radius of the particle as a function of time when the when the unreacted core is undergoing a certain fluid solid catal non catalytic reaction. Now, for large dp large particle size and large velocities then the mass transport coefficient scales as u to the power of half that is the velocity square root of velocity divided by the square root of particle. So, let us take the case of uh, Stokes law. Stokes law regime. Let us take the uh, case of Stokes regime. In Stokes regime, the mole balance d n b by d t, which is the rate of change of uh, the solid species with respect to time and that is equal to d n a by d t and that is equal to rho b, which is the density of the solids into d by d t of 4 by 3 pi r cube, where r is the radius of the unreacted core, unreacted core which is actually changing in size due to the reaction and that should be equal to minus kg which is the mass transport coefficient multiplied by the surface area of the unreacted core surface multiplied by the concentration of the uh, reactant species in the bulk gas phase. So, from here we can write that uh, rho b into dr by dt that is equal to minus kg into cag. But in the Stokes regime the mass transport coefficient essentially is the ratio of the diffusivity divided by the uh, radius of the particle and so that is given by minus de into cag divided by r. So, now integrating this expression we can find that integral r naught to r r dr that is equal to minus d e c a g divided by the density into integral 0 to t d t. So, this expression this this model actually provides the relationship between the radius of the particle as a function of time. So, now integrating we can find out what is the uh, time that is taken for reaching a certain radius. So, time t is given by rho b r naught square divided by 2 times C A G into the effective diffusivity to 1 minus r by r naught the whole square. 
So, that is the time taken by the unreact taken by the particle to reach a certain radius r because of the heterogeneous uh, uh, gas solid reaction. So, now in order to achieve complete conversion complete conversion means all of the all of the solids present in the particle has actually been completely consumed consumed which means that r equal to 0 corresponds to complete conversion. So, under these conditions we can find out that the time taken for complete conversion is given by rho b r naught square divided by 2 C A G into into d e which is the diffusivity of the particle uh, diffusivity of the species through the particle. And so, the fractional time that is taken to reach a certain uh, radius of the unreacted core is essentially given by 1 by 1 minus r by r naught square that is equal to 1 minus 1 minus x b to the power of 2 by 3. So, this expression can be obtained simply by taking the ratio of these two expressions which are present here. So, So, now we can easily find out from this expression that the ratio the fractional time that is taken here is actually proportional to 1 minus conversion to the power of 2 by 3. Now, if we compare what is the corresponding expression in the case of the particles where the size of the particle does not change, then it is a completely different expression and, and that is actually uh, given by. In the case of constant size, if we compare, we will see that if the film diffusion is controlling, then in the case of constant size, the fractional time that is taken is equal to the conversion itself. And while for the varying size, T by tau is actually given by 1 minus 1 minus x p to the power of 2 by 3. It is important to note that the uh, it is important to note that the conversion here is actually uh, reflects the size of the unreacted core and the conversion here actually reflects the size of the unreacted core in the varying size. So, therefore, clearly there is a big difference in the time that is taken uh, for the particle to reach a certain size where if the if the particle size is constant or the particle size is actually particle is actually shrinking because of the reaction. So, what we have seen in today's lecture is uh, we have looked at how to capture the uh, radius of the unreacted core as a function of time and other properties of the system when, uh, when there is uh, different processes that may be controlling the overall reaction. So, this we have done for two different cases both the modes that is uh, the mode where the particle size does not change with respect when the due to the heterogeneous reaction and for the mode where the particle size actually shrinks because of the heterogeneous reaction between the fluid and the solid. Thank you.